In this video, I'm going to solve these two questions. Let's start with the first one. We are given data on monthly income, which we are denoting by X, and monthly food expenditure, which we are denoting by Y, of seven households. That means the sample size is equal to seven. And this is the other information that we are given. In the part number one, we have to obtain the estimated regression line of monthly food expenditure, that is Y, on month income, that is X. So basically, we have to obtain the estimated regression line when we regress Y on X. In this case, Y is equal to monthly food expenditure and X is equal to month income. Now, before we talk about the estimated regression line, first of all, let's discuss what the population model is going to be in this case. So in this case, we are regressing Y on X. And when you regress Y on X, there are two possibilities. The first possibility is YI equal to beta 1 plus beta 2 XI plus UI. And the second possibility is YI is equal to beta 2 XI plus UI. In both of these possibilities, we are regressing Y on X. The only difference is that in the first model over here, we have the intercept term beta 1. And in the second model over here, we do not have the intercept term. Now see, generally speaking, by default, you should always work with this model unless mentioned otherwise. So you will only work with this type of model where you do not have an intercept term if they ask you to work with that model. If there is nothing mentioned in the question which is hinting you towards this model, then by default, always work with this type of model. Okay. Now, if this is the population model that we are working with, then the equation of the estimated regression line is going to be y i hat equal to b1 plus b2 x i, where b1 is the estimator of beta 1 and b2 is the estimator of beta 2. So to obtain the estimated regression line, that is to obtain this equation, we have to figure out the value of b1 and we have to figure out the value of b2. And we have the direct formulas to figure out these values. If you know your formulas well, then you would agree that b1 is equal to y bar minus b2 x bar. And formula to calculate b2 is equal to summation of capital yi minus y bar multiplied with capital XI minus X bar divided by summation of capital XI minus X bar whole square. Okay, so these are the two formulas that I'm going to work with. Now note that before we find the value of B1, we need to figure out the value of B2. So first we are going to solve for B2 and then we will take a look at B1. Now let's take a look at the information that's given to us in the question. Notice that most of the information is related in lowercase letters. And we are given that small yi is equal to capital yi minus y bar and small xi is equal to capital xi minus x bar. If we use these notations, then we can write the formula to calculate b2 is summation of small yi multiplied with small xi divided by summation of small xi square. Now note that we are given that summation of small xi multiplied with yi is equal to this. So the numerator is 211.7143 and we are given over here that summation of small xi square is this. So the denominator is 801.4286 and if you divide these two, you will get that b2 is equal to 0.2641. Okay. Now that we have calculated the value of B2, let's find the value of B1. So B1 is equal to Y bar minus B2 X bar. We are given over here that Y bar is equal to 9.143 minus, we got that B2 is 0 0.2641 and we are given over here that X bar is this. So 0 0.2641 is multiplied with 30.286 and if you solve this, you will get that B1 is equal to 1.145. So this is the value of B1, this is the value of B2. This means that the equation of the estimated regression line is y i hat equal to 1.145 plus 0.2641 xi. Okay, this is the answer to first part. Let's move to the second part now. 
In this part, we have to calculate the standard error of regression. The standard error of regression is denoted by sigma hat and the formula that we have to calculate sigma hat is under root of residual sum of squares divided by n minus k where this n is the sample size and k is the total number of parameters so the total number of parameters that you have in the model including the intercept including the intercept so before we figure out the numerator let's first talk about the denominator n is the sample size and we are given over here that we have data for seven households that means n is equal to seven and k is the total number of parameters including the intercept how many parameters do we have in the population model we have two parameters beta 1 and beta 2 so k is equal to 2 so your denominator is going to be 7 minus 2 that is 5 now let's see how can we find the numerator that is the residual sum of squares well to find the residual sum of squares i'm going to use this equation tss is equal to ess plus rss if you know your formulas well then you should know that TSS is defined as summation of capital YI minus Y bar whole square which as per the notations given in the question can be written as summation of small YI square and we are given the value of summation of small YI square in the question it's this so TSS is equal to 60.8571 so we know this if we can now figure out the value of ESS then finding the value of RSS will be simple so let's see how can we figure out the value of ESS. We know that ESS is defined as summation yi hat minus y hat bar whole square or we can also write that ESS is defined as summation yi hat minus y bar whole square. So the first element in both of these brackets is same that is y i hat. The second element over here is the mean of fitted values. So this is mean of fitted values. This is y hat bar. And the second element over here is mean of actual values. So this is the mean of actual y values. That's why we have y bar over here. Now the thing is that it doesn't matter whether you write y hat bar or y bar because one of the algebraic properties of OLS is that y hat bar is equal to y bar. That is the mean of the fitted values is equal to the mean of actual values. And this is something that I have already discussed in one of my videos. So I'm not going to show it to you over here. For those of you who do not understand from where do we get this, I'm putting a link of the video in the description of this video. So if you are feeling lost, then do check the description of this video and it will have the link of the video in which I explained this part. Okay, now let's get back to the question. So this means that we have two ways of defining ESS. Either I can write y hat bar as the second element or I can write y bar as the second element. Doesn't matter. So now let's use these formulas to find the value of ESS. And let me also create some space over here. Now see, we know that y i hat is equal to b1 plus b2 xi. Okay, this is the equation of the estimated regression line. And we also know that b1 is equal to y bar minus b2 x bar, which implies that we can write y bar is equal to b1 plus b2 x bar. Now, if y i hat is equal to this and y bar is equal to this, to find the value of ESS, we have to find the difference between y i hat and y bar. So, y i hat minus y bar is equal to b1 plus b2 xi minus b1 plus b2 x bar and this is equal to b1 plus b2 xi minus b1 minus b2 x bar this and this gets cancelled this implies that y i hat minus y bar is equal to b2 
capital Xi minus X bar. Now note that ESS is the square of this difference. So the square of this and the summation of this. So this is what your ESS is equal to. Okay. Now we have all the information in the question to evaluate this right hand side. The right hand side is summation of B2 square Xi minus X bar square. So because we have the square of the entire term over here, we get B2 square multiplied with capital Xi minus X bar whole square. And because B2 is a constant, its square is also going to be a constant. So we can write this expression as B2 square summation capital Xi minus X bar whole square. Now note that we are already given this information in the question. We found that B2 is equal to 0 0.2641. So we can put that value over here. This is nothing but small xi. That means this expression is b2 square multiplied with summation of small xi square. And we are also given in the question that summation of small xi square is equal to 801.4286. This is something that we are given in the question. This implies that ESS is equal to 0 0.2641 square multiplied with 801.4286. And if you solve this, you will get that ESS is equal to 55.8986. So this is the value of ESS that we have. We already know the value of TSS from here. So now it's quite simple to find the value of RSS. The value of RSS is going to be TSS minus ESS. So let's do that. So now we can write that RSS is going to be TSS minus ESS. TSS is 60.8571. ESS is 55.8986. And this subtraction is equal to 4.9585. So the residual sum of squares, that is the RSS, is equal to 4.9585. And now we can find the value of sigma hat. It is equal to under root of RSS divided by n minus k. So this is equal to under root of 4.9585. We have already discussed about the denominator before. n is equal to 7 and k is equal to 2. So the denominator is 5. And if you solve this, you will get that this is equal to under root of 0 0.9917. And this is equal to 0 0.9958. So the standard error of the regression, that is sigma hat, is equal to 0 0.9958. And this is what they were asking us in part number 2. Let's move to the next part now. In part number three, they are asking us what proportion of the total variation in food expenditure of households, that is the variable y, can be attributed to the linear relationship between food expenditure and income. Basically, they are asking you to find the value of R square because this is how you define R square. R square tells you what proportion of the total variation in the dependent variable can be explained by the total variation in the independent variables. So they have written the same thing over here just in a slightly different language. So all we have to do in this part is we have to find the value of R square which is going to be quite straightforward now because we know this already. So there are two formulas to find the value of R square. You can either use this formula that R square is equal to ESS divided by TSS or you can also use this formula that R square is equal to 1 minus RSS divided by TSS. You can use either of these formulas. You already know all this information which makes it quite straightforward now. So this implies that R square is equal to 55.8986 divided by 60.8571. So I'm using this formula and if you solve this you will get that this is equal to 0 0.9185 and that's it. This is your answer to part number three that the R square value is equal to 0 0.9185. So with this we are done with the first question. Let's move to the second question now. 
The second question that I'm going to discuss in this video is this. So there are two parts in this question. In the first part, they are asking you the two reasons for the presence of autocorrelation. Note that they are only asking you two reasons. So do not write all the reasons in the exam that is unnecessarily going to waste your time. And in the second part, they are asking us that if rho is known to be 0 0.8, discuss how the problem of autocorrelation can be remedied using generalized least squares for the following two variable regression model, where the disturbance term ut follows AR1 scheme, that is this. Well, both of these parts are theory questions and the answer to these questions is given directly in your textbook. Let me show you where the answers are written in the textbook so that you could directly read the answers from there. This is chapter number 10 from your textbook. And as you can see, they have written over here, why does autocorrelation occur? There are several reasons for autocorrelation, some of which are as follows. The first reason that they have mentioned is inertia. Then they have also talked about the model specification error, the cobweb phenomena and data manipulation. So they have mentioned four reasons over here. In the first part of the question, you have to mention any two out of these four. Okay. And the answer to the second part of that question is over here. So this is section number 10.4 remedial measures. They are working with the same model that they have mentioned in the question. Even in this model, the error term follows the AR1 scheme, the same thing that they have written over here. The only difference is that over here in the textbook, when they are applying these steps, they are not putting any particular value of rho. But in your question, you are given that rho is equal to 0 0.8. So you have to do the same steps that are outlined over here. It's just that you have to put rho is equal to 0 0.8 while doing these steps and that's it. Okay. So you can directly pick the answer from section number 10.4 of your textbook. And that's it for this video.